Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Bike Tricks Juggernaut Classic Duo. So let's get into it. Before we get started with the walk around, if you are looking to purchase any model offered by Bike Tricks, do us a huge favor and use our link in the description. It's a free and easy way to help support eBike Escape and makes reviews like this one possible. Down in the description, we'll also have links to our popular electric bike accessories list, top e-bike brands page, and finally our electric bike discounts code page, where we track all the deals on the electric bike brands that we follow. With that out of the way, if you aren't familiar already with our reviews, first we're gonna jump into the walk around, then we'll get to some first person riding footage, do some riding on flat ground, and then take it up our large hill climb test. And finally, we'll get to some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this electric bike. So be sure to stay tuned until the end. But first, let's get into all the specs of this electric bike. So why Bike Tricks? I've actually been admiring their Juggernaut series. They offer a ton of different variations and fat tire electric bikes. And really I wanted to get my hands on any of them so I could do a review as I mentioned, this is the Juggernaut Classic. It is a step up from their hub motor bikes, coming in at 27.99, 330 pound capacity. It also is offered in a step through if you prefer. This is the step over model. This particular model is offered in copper, electric blue, and what you see here in black. This is the 18 and a half inch frame. It's also offered in a 17 inch frame. With the 17 inch frame, you're looking at riders five foot two and up, and on this frame, riders five foot eight and above. Definitely a large fat tire bike, but even my wife at 5'5 five five was able to get over this electric bike and ride it, and she was actually having a lot of fun. So I would say even with this frame, if you have a comfortable rider, you can go down a little bit more on the height range. One of the things I really like about Bike Tricks are all the customizations you can make at checkout with the various bikes. This one in particular, if you don't want the fat tires, you can go with 27 and a half by three inch tires, more mountain bike style, if you wanna take this on some single track. And they also offer an upgrade for Magura front brakes. I'll talk about the stock brakes here in a little bit. And that's something really unique on the market because of course, if you add additional options, it adds additional complexity and a lot of companies like to keep things simple. So I really think that is something that's unique about Bike Tricks. And one other thing I wanted to call out is their bikes are really great for tall riders. So if you are above six feet tall, maybe 6'1", 6'2", 6'3", you can go on their website and chat with them and ask what bike is going to fit you the best. This is one brand though, that does cater to taller riders, so something else to be aware of. Let's talk about all the components that you get on this bike. Not a surprise, we have Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, a component that performs really well, really great stopping power, and of course, hydraulic is what we would expect at this price point. Those are paired with 180 millimeter rotors. This is a full-size fat tire bike, Kenda 26 by four inches wide tires, have some tread on there, you can take them pretty much anywhere. To cut down a little bit on weight, the company uses rims with holes in them, which just lower the weight in the wheels a little bit. And this wheel is a quick release, so you can very easily take off this front wheel in case you wanna throw it in the back of your vehicle laying down. This bike does come with front and rear metal fenders. Up front, we have an RST guide front fork, 80 millimeters of travel, now this fork is a fork I've seen on other electric bikes. I do think it performs well. Of course, I would have preferred to see an air fork, but not necessarily something that's a given at this price point, but it would have been an extra bonus. There's both preload adjustment as well as lockout on this front fork. I'll push on the fork so you can get an idea of what to expect from the front suspension. Certainly going to help soak up some bumps. And again, it feels pretty good. The bike comes with an integrated Kendo Plus by Spininga Light. Spininga is a brand we see on many electric bikes, but this particular light from them appears pretty bright. But if you wanna get even crazier, they do sell an upgrade. Again, at checkout, you can get a 2000 lumen front headlight if you'd prefer. 
Jumping up to the head tube, we have the Bike Tricks logo. I always like to point out the cable management. They do an okay job here. There's some zip ties. I would have liked to see this all wrapped with one type of material. They have some Velcro here, which does a decent job, at least keeping them together, but aesthetically, it could look a little bit nicer. Moving on to the cockpit, we have these fairly basic grips. They're non-locking. If you wanted to upgrade them, you can get some Ergon grips. That's the brand that I highly recommend. And really, I'd only do that if these start loosening up a little bit on you. I already talked about the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. These levers also feel really nice given they are hydraulic and there are motor cutoffs. So as soon as you hit the brakes, it's going to cut power to the motor. One thing that's really unique about this electric bike compared to many mid-drive electric bikes is you do get a throttle. In this instance, a left-hand thumb throttle. Let's jump over to the right side here, a nine-speed drivetrain using Shimano Olivio. This is a trigger shifter, which I personally prefer compared to the very entry-level thumb shifters offered by Shimano. So I think they did a nice job here. And Olivio is a step up on the Shimano hierarchy. Attached right to the shifter is the shift sensor. What this does is it cuts power to the motor immediately as soon as you shift. That prevents any unnecessary wear on the drivetrain, an important component on mid-drive electric bikes. Now, given this is using a Bafang mid-drive, they also have the Bafang display and controls up here. Really easy to use, power button here on the right side. Nice color LCD. I've used this display on many electric bikes at this point, and I'm a big fan of this Bafang display. In the top left-hand corner, we have time. Top right-hand corner, we have battery percentage. We have miles per hour, front and center, trip odometer, and then we have the pedal assist levels. Now we have up and down buttons as we see on many electric bikes. Right now the bike is in eco, so that's going to give me five levels of pedal assist, but then if I hold the pedal assist up button, it's going to put me in sport mode. And there's also five levels here. So really 10 levels of pedal assist. And hitting the I button here is going to give you additional information. Odometer, max speed, average speed, range, and changing the pedal assist levels will change the estimated range. That's a really cool feature of this display. And then you also have a dedicated light button, which is always nice because then you don't need to remember the button combination. And this display does have advanced settings. Hitting the I button twice quickly will get you into the advanced settings. I can show you a few of the advanced settings here. What most people are going to be concerned with is going to be the speed limit. They also have a ambient light sensitivity. That's for the lights if you want them to automatically turn on, which they do when it's a certain darkness. You can also set a password and set the clock and change the default mode for whether you want it to start in eco or sport. Pretty self-explanatory display here. What's also cool on this display is if you go into information, there is information on the battery here and then you can also go into error codes in case you get an error with your electric bike that can help you troubleshoot it. This is the graphic package, Juggernaut Classic on the top tube and the Bike Tricks branding on the down tube. And just to give you an idea of removing the integrated battery here, put the keys in, turn the key all the way to the left. There's a little clip here. The integrated battery is housed really nicely into the down tube here, though it is a large pack. If you do have any challenges removing a battery from an electric bike that has a battery that comes down from the down tube here, you can always try to move the front tire. That can help as well. And if you're not familiar with this electric bike, you'll notice some additional mounting points here. This is for an external battery. So you can get this bike with an additional battery right from Bike Tricks. It does come with a large 17 amp hour battery but then you can upgrade to a 14 amp hour battery and externally mounted right here for $499 and a 17 amp hour battery. If you wanted two 17 amp hour batteries on this bike, it would cost you an additional $699 to get that external one. And then the plug is right here for that battery to attach to. Really cool, something that's definitely unique about this fat tire electric bike and going to cater to those who are really maybe doing some very big adventures and really don't wanna have any problem with range and traveling at high speeds.
The only downside to these mounts here for the external battery is you don't have any mounts for a bottle cage. So something to be aware of, they do sell Velcro ones. So you just have to get a little bit more creative. This bike comes with Welgo metal pedals, a brand that we see on almost every single electric bike. You can upgrade them if you want. Maybe you want some more grip or want to add some additional color. As I mentioned, this is a mid-drive electric bike, the Bafang BBS-02, 750 watt nominal, 1000 watts peak. And you can see that this frame is really built around this specific motor. And there's some screws here in case you ever need to remove the motor but it's housed here to keep it protected from the elements. Moving on to the rear of the bike, it does have a quick release in the rear, which of course is possible because the motor isn't back there. We have a kickstand that's located towards the rear, nice and burly kickstand, not going to come in contact with the pedals, which is always nice. There's a sensor here that reads this magnet, so the bike knows how fast it's going, knows what to read you in the display. Again, the Tektro hydraulic disc brakes in the rear full metal fenders in the rear, and it does come with this rear rack rated at 25 kilograms, should be around 55 pounds, and it does have some pannier hangers on it. You could put a bag up here. And mounted to the rear rack, you have the blaze light. This brake light does go brighter when you hit the brakes, though with these types of lights, they leave a lot to be desired as far as visibility from the rear. It's a little bit overcast now, so you can see it a little bit better, but in bright sunlight, it would be pretty difficult. So mostly going to be valuable in the evenings or at night. Let's talk about gearing, nine speeds. On their website, they advertise it this as 11 to 34 teeth. I counted these as 12 to 36 teeth. We'll put on the screen which one is the correct one according to the company and what these bikes typically come with. And in the front, we have a 44 tooth single sided chain ring. I would have liked to see some protective tape or a neoprene sleeve back here protecting the chain stay from any chain slap, especially with an electric bike that can be taken off road like this one. Check out our electric bike accessories list. I link the tape that we use when bikes don't come with this. In the rear is the Shimano Olivio rear derailleur step up from the very basic Shimano components. Really happy with the choice they made with the rear derailleur. Moving on to the saddle, fairly basic saddle. If you want something more comfortable, again, check out our electric bike accessories list where we share the ones that we see people purchase the most. And since these are really personal preference, it's always good to ride it a little bit before you decide if you want to upgrade it. A couple of things I wanted to point out before we get to the first person riding footage. The first one is there is a USB port located right underneath the LCD display so you can charge up your device. Another thing is these handlebars have a slight swoop to them. So it puts you in a bit of a more upright riding position than you otherwise would be with some flat handlebars. Just to note, this is not an adjustable stem, though you could add one if you wanted to be even more upright. And even though this is the high step frame, you can see that they swoop the top tube here. So it's a little bit easier to get your foot over. And finally, these cables are internally routed through the top tube as well as the down tube here. Really clean install. And some of those cables come out beneath the down tube here and run along the rear of the bike. Another important aspect of this electric bike is that it is a cadence sensor compared to a torque sensor. So that might be either a pro or con depending on your preference. But I'll talk about that in our upcoming first person riding footage. Let's see what this bike can do. All right, first person riding footage on the Bike Tricks Juggernaut Classic. It's a balmy 34 degrees right now. And I'm excited to see what this bike can do. Actually, one of my first rides on this bike. I have the speedometer app by Coolnix here to check the speed with the display because they're not always 100% accurate. And I did go ahead and override the speed. Just keep in mind, this bike comes shipped with a top speed of 20 miles per hour. And at checkout, you can ask them to override it for off-road use only. Be sure to follow all of your local laws and regulations. Again, the way you go and override the speed is hitting the I button twice. And you can go into display setting and scroll all the way down to speed limit and you can change that from 20 miles per hour and turn it up. So we will see what this bike can do. I do have the bike shifted down to second gear to get more acceleration. And then I will of course shift up to the higher gears. All right, 
Throttle only three, two, one, here we go. Definitely can feel pull from that mid drive. Three, six, nine, we're gonna shift up. Third gear, 14, 17, 18, we're gonna shift up. 18, 19, 20, 21. We're gonna shift up again. 22, 23. We'll shift up again. Looks like sixth gear. 23, 24, 25. We'll shift up again. 25 shift up again and it looks like 12 I see 26 now I shift it up all right I think it's safe to say 25 26 miles per hour on throttle alone again you do want to be careful in those higher gears in fact, some companies recommend only using certain gears while you're riding a mid-drive electric bike. Now just keep in mind this bike, like many electric bikes, it's very heavy. It's gonna be pretty difficult to pedal this bike with no pedal assist. Usually around eight or nine miles an hour is gonna be possible on flat ground, which is what I'm going now. But let's go into the various pedal assist modes. I'm going to shift down here. Again, probably start at second gear, maybe even third gear. Uh, we'll start in second here. And we'll go through these pedal assist levels pretty fast because there are 10. All right, pedal assist level one, just can barely feel the motor kicking on going about eight, nine miles an hour. Let's go in two. Now I feel some extra power. I'd probably shift the third gear, fourth gear here. Again, this is a cadence sensor. Let's go into pedal assist level three. Again, I feel a jump. Looks like we're in fifth gear now, getting about 18 miles an hour, 19 miles an hour, and starting to get a little bit of ghost pedaling, so I will shift up here to sixth gear, 20 miles an hour. Again, only in pedal assist level three in eco. I would maybe even shift up here to seventh gear here. Went about 23 miles an hour. I do feel like the pedal assist is very responsive. As soon as I start spinning the pedals, it gives me power. All right, let's go into pedal assist level four. Nineteen, twenty-one, twenty-three. All right. Pedal assist level five, still an eco. 26, wow, 27. Shift up here to eighth gear. 28, wow, okay, 29. 30, oh my goodness. 30. Let's go ahead and go into sport mode. I am in pedal assist level five in sport mode, so the highest level of pedal assist. And it looks like 30 miles an hour is gonna be the top speed. I'm gonna slow my cadence here. And yeah, it's holding me at 29, 28 miles an hour, no problem. And of course I'd probably shift up there into ninth gear. So very powerful mid drive. Maybe not the fastest on acceleration with throttle alone, given you have to shift through gears like you would on a car. But that top speed while pedaling is very impressive. Again, keep in mind that that's technically only for off-road use. One other thing that I think is worth calling out is with the mid-drive motors, you want to ride it how you would ride a normal bike, which means when you get to a stoplight, shift all the way down, start in those low, low gears and work your way up. You don't want to be cranking the throttle 
from a stop. All right, let's start in sport mode here and just go through the various pedal assist levels. I'm in third gear now. Sport mode level one. And again, it doesn't seem like it's giving me a ton of power in sport mode, pedal assist level one. Two feels a little bit more. Third gear, or sorry, third pedal assist feels a little bit more. So you might actually be able to just ride this bike in sport mode all the time. Just given that the sport mode pedal assist level one isn't giving you a ton of power. All right, so we know what this bike can do on flat ground, but let's see what it can do up our large hill climb test. Okay, time for the hill climb test. This is the hill that we test out all the electric bikes that we review so you can compare and contrast. We'll put a picture on the screen of the hill because it looks so much smaller on the GoPro. We'll also throw the specs up there as well. Now, just a note, the mid drives testing on this hill, it's a little bit tricky because you have the gears and the motors utilizing the gears. So based on my riding this bike, I thought third, fourth gear is probably going to be the sweet, sweet spot. We're at 22 miles an hour now in fourth gear. And I'll shift down if necessary. But we'll see what this bike can do. Now with the hub, hub motor bikes, it's easy. Just hit the throttle, you're good to go. And you can kind of see what the motor can do. All right, hill's really starting now, 19 miles an hour, 18, 17, 16, 15. I'm gonna shift down to third gear and just see if that helps at all. 14, back up to 15. So it looks like it's gonna hold us there. Let's just shift down once more and just see. Yeah, I feel like the fourth, fourth gear or so is the sweet spot and the speed is going back up. So I would say if you're comparing this to other fat tire bikes, I saw a minimum speed of 15 miles an hour. I know it went to 14 for just a second, though I was playing a little bit with the gears. So that's how it stacks up against some of the hub motor bikes if you wanna compare and contrast. Though of course you have the ability to take advantage of, of all the gears. So that's how it does on throttle alone, but this is an e-bike, so I always recommend pedaling. So I'll go back down the hill and see what this bike can do with some human power as well. Okay, hill climb test while pedaling. And just to note, I like to test out the brakes. I have a lot of experience with these Tektro hydraulic disc brakes and to no surprise, they performed very well. Really like these hydraulic disc brakes on this bike. So starting up the hill, I actually went ahead and went into sport mode right away. And I'm in second gear right now. Pedal assist level one in sport mode. I am going to want to go higher. Just went into pedal assist level two. Could probably shift up here to third gear. Going about 10 miles an hour. Again, cadence sensor. So as long as your legs are spinning, that motor is going to put in power. This feels pretty comfortable. Maybe a slightly faster cadence than I'd prefer, but no problem going up the hill. 10 miles an hour in third gear, pedal assist level two in sport mode. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level three. Eleven miles an hour could shift up, I think. Still putting in some effort. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level four. Feel a lot more power there. Let's shift up. Fifth gear, going about 14 miles an hour. Let's go ahead and go into pedal assist level five, the highest pedal assist level. 16, 
17, I could shift up to six gear maybe. And yeah, holding me maybe a little bit faster than with throttle alone, going about 17 miles an hour now. And again, in sixth gear. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage. And I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Juggernaut Classic. Ah, uh, finally, a Bike Tricks Juggernaut review. What's great about the Bike Tricks Juggernaut series is there are a ton of different options. The Hub Duo, Classic 9, this bike, the Classic Duo, the Ultra Duo 3, Ultra Duo 2, Ultra FS Pro, the Ultra Beast, Ultra FS Pro 2, and the XD Duo. As if that weren't enough options, they also offer step-throughs in many of these models. The Juggernaut series start at $23.99 and go all the way up to $6,000. What do they all have in common? Fat tires. Before we talk about this bike, it's worth calling out that Bike Tricks is a great e-bike brand for big and tall riders. If you're not sure what will fit, their chat support is super helpful. And also the ability to customize each bike at checkout is a selling point of Bike Tricks e-bikes. Yes, different colors, but also frame sizes, different batteries, different brake brands, tire sizes, upgraded lights, suspension seat post, all different options depending on the model you choose. Back to the classic duo though. Where does this e-bike fit into the market? I view it as the next step up from the hub motor e-bikes at around the $2,000 price point. At $2,799, it's still a fair bit more, but they also have the Classic 9, also a mid-drive at $2,399. By the way, I'd like to explore what other mid-drive e-bikes people are considering at around this price point, so let me know in the comment section below what you're considering or would consider. If you're looking at this e-bike, you're probably someone who has decided on a mid-drive e-bike, or at least you're looking at it for comparison purposes. The Bifang BBS-02 is a tried and true motor and has 120 newton meters of torque. It's impressively capable given it can hit 30 miles per hour when unlocking it for off-road only use. Bike Tricks lists on their website that it can handle moderate hills, but it's hard to imagine a hill this e-bike wouldn't handle in a lower gear. Of course, if you do live in a hilly area, this motor is going to be much happier given it can be in a lower gear compared to its hub drive counterparts. Plus, unlike many mid-drives, you do get a throttle. Another big selling point of this e-bike is the optional secondary battery for those who really want to extend range, though the 52 volt, 17 and a half amp hour battery is going to be plenty for a vast majority of riders. Bike Trick states an estimated range of 45 miles, which definitely seems in the realm of possibilities, of course, dependent on the usual factors. The RST guide fork with 80 millimeters of travel seems adequate for this e-bike, though getting up this high in price range, I wonder if they might be able to throw on a cheaper air suspension fork. The other components round out this bike nicely, including the quality Tektro hydraulic disc brakes and the Shimano Olivio trigger shifter and rear derailleur on the nine speed cassette. As far as other considerations, I think it's important to be aware that this mid-drive motor has a cadence sensor. Some will be happy with this fact given you won't have to put in quite as much effort to get more motor power, for those that want the torque sensor, well, I have good news. Many of the other models in the Juggernaut series are listed as having a combo cadence torque sensor. For me, I didn't mind the cadence sensor since I never experienced ghost pedaling with the help of the nine speeds and still felt like I was able to put in as much effort as I wanted to. If you plan to purchase a Bike Tricks e-bike, we'd really appreciate it if you use our link in the description. It keeps us pumping out content like this. Bike Tricks is a brand I hold in high regard. In fact, they've been around since 2014. The Juggernaut Classic Duo e-bike gets our stamp of approval, but check this out. This is the original Juggernaut that launched in 2014 on Kickstarter. Suffice to say that the company has come a long way since then. Let us know what other Bike Tricks models you're most excited about and what your pick would be in the Juggernaut series. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.